All right, here we are. I'm back from Ireland, and I have just about the most legendary case of jet lag ever ever experienced, and I still have to go to Canada tomorrow. But uh, I finally got to see The Dark Knight Rises, which, again, I was in Ireland, so I didn't have a chance to go see it. Although it was fun. It was perfectly, I don't regret going to Ireland or anything like that. It was just I was so busy, there was no opportunity to go see it. But finally did. I had, I had a, about a day to rest and get back to this. So apparently, I, this is Miles' second time seeing it, so apparently it was good enough. He was willing to go back. <laughs> but um, I've heard a lot of mixed reactions on this one. So what were, did, were you paying more attention to that than I did? The, uh, you, pr you probably read on, on some forums about how it was, some people thought it was disappointing. Yeah, I didn't really read it. It's just some were saying it's too dark. There's not enough. Too dark, really. In tone, um, not visually, but. Bat I, <laughs> <laughs> but I saw it with my friends, uh, my coworkers, and I kind of got their reaction. They liked it, but I I kind of gave you the yeah. the warning or a, a kind of preparation for going in, and that. You need to view this as a character movie. You cannot view this as Batman wrecks people's shit. Yeah, it's... This is going to be huge spoilers, but then again, almost everyone saw the movie before I did, so whatever. This is a different movie than I think was advertised. I, I honestly think the uh, the movie's trailer was a little misleading. And it actually... It, it's good that you kind of buffered me against it because I might have been kind of thrown by that had you not told me that um, it's it's a different movie especially you know just coming off the dark night which was a very action-packed movie and that's not to say this one isn't you know an action movie but it's a very different flick in that uh, Batman is in it very little you know considering in the dark night he's in virtually every scene you know except him and the Joker I'm just purely guessing I was saying about ten minutes in the first half, and you know, maybe thirty minutes in the in the second half with the whole action climax going yeah. on. And the reason the reason he's in it very little is because this takes place, I think, like seven years after the whole incident with the Joker, and Bruce Wayne has just completely retired from being the Batman because one, uh, he's basically brought out like an era of peace in Gotham, at least relatively speaking. He's brought down the entire mafia, and the, you know, the, the lie they've told about Harvey Dent has essentially played past the Harvey Dent Act, which has, you know, put all the felons that, you know, were taken in by the law that no parole. So they built, they built Blackgate Prison, and there's like a thousand people in there, no parole. So basically crime is largely eliminated to the point where, like, the, the cops are going to Commissioner Gordon, and they're like, hey, you want us to go bust truant students, you know? So... That was actually kind of weird how Gotham has kind of become, like, this utopia. <laughs> but, um, so the, eventually, of course, this criminal named Bane uh, makes his appearance known, and he's, for years apparently, or maybe months, has kind of recruited what remains of Gotham's underground along with his personal army of, I think, mercenaries. I'm not sure where they came from, but let's just say they're mercenaries. And he's kind of been building a, an army in the sewers of Gotham, and eventually he kind of makes his presence known, and what what actually gets Batman on the case at Bane, because, uh... It's, uh, Catwoman takes Bruce Wayne's prince. Oh, yeah, it was, you know, Catwoman stealing his prince, and, uh, from, from the safe, and, like, there's some guys who want to get it, and... So, yeah, that puts him on the trail of Bane, which is a trail he really shouldn't have gone onto, because, one, Batman's body is physically wrecked. That's essentially why he, uh he quit just because he's been fighting crime for so years and because in the Nolan verse things are way more realistic you know they've you know it's it's often been asked for people who have been critical of the comics like you know anyone who endured that much physical punishment would be a cripple by now well Bruce Wayne is essentially a cripple in this movie which doesn't help him much against in his fight against Bane as you soon see so he he corners Bane or Bane corners him, rather, and they have the fight. Now, this is a little different from the comics in that in the comics, Bane is actually very intelligent. He wears Batman down by releasing all the inmates in Arkham, so he has to go track them down, so he goes like a week without sleep. And then Bane attacks him. 
like right on the lawn of Wayne Manor, and then that's when you get the the breaking the bat scene, one of the most iconic and enduring moments in comics. So in this case, Bane is just straight up better. You know, he's he's built like a brick shit house. And by the way, Tom Hardy like fucking bulked up like the Incredible Hulk for this role. No, you watch Inception. He might be. You know, I guess he's a big guy, but fuck me, he's not that big. He, one of his first roles was was Bronson, which he played this big burly yeah, bastard right, in right. prison. So I I, I kind of saw it, but he he looks bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he looks fucking huge. I, I guess in Inception, he just wore really nice tailored suits, because the size in that movie, you don't ever get that, because you don't see Tom Hardy in Inception and go, shit kicker, you know? Like, so, the, you know, uh, the comic purists, I think, might be kind of weirded out by that, the fact that, you know, Batman is this essentially a cripple. And it, it you know, it made sense to me, and it... So that's the first thing that's kind of disappointing, where he's kind of walking on a cane, and every, you know he's become this complete recluse ever since he hung up the hung up the cowl, and it, he's he's really not even willing to go out anymore and do anything because okay, there's kind of no reason. And so that really is the the entire crux of the movie, or at least the character crux of the movie is, ever since he gave up the crusade, so to speak, he, you know he physically couldn't continue it. He's tried as Bruce Wayne to improve Gotham City and improve the lives of anyone he can help by, you know, charities and stuff like that, funding boys clubs and, uh, you know, orphanages and all this stuff, trying to like, basically build Gotham's infrastructure and, and charity work. And so essentially Bruce Wayne has... Bruce Wayne has essentially sank his own company into this. And so... Sorry, Oreo's got a squeaky toy. I'll try to take it away. Um, I know we're not paying attention to you. Here we go. Sorry, I know she's distracting, but uh, you know uh, Bruce Wayne has essentially tanked his own company, throwing it all into into charities because this is the only way he can help people and kind of honor his parents' memory because he can't physically do it anymore. So you know it's that already. I think the audience is kind of like if you were expecting a Batman movie later, oh, what the shit is this? Like he's not he's not doing Batman shit. He's locked himself in a room and he's growing a wicked beard and he's probably peeing in mason jars like they said you know <laughs> so eventually you know bane starts uh he has to get on the case because somebody wants his f uh, fingerprints and he figures it has something to do with this gigantic he, something with to do with this gigantic fusion reactor that he's building and then when he realized what it could be used for he immediately shut the project down which apparently is really what tanked his company and you know, didn't that cost like half his company to build this yeah. energy project? So I think he figures pretty early on that you know something bad's going to come of this this invention, and that's where he kind of gets in the suit. But uh, Oreo, you're killing me with this shit. Uh, come here, come here. <laughs> so. Um, where, where the fuck was I even? The fucking squeaky toy. You're just killing me, Aurea. Where was I? Oh, the fusion reactor, right. So, he, he finally gets in the Batman suit, and he realizes he can't really hack anymore, because even his arms are, like, completely shut. So, apparently, like, Lucius Fox builds him, like, these really cool super braces on his knees. They never actually say that. He just kind of, like, throws a brace on his knee that he's like, ah! He, he can kick through concrete now, and he's... Fucking cool. <laughs> or is this because we don't pay attention to you during the videos? That's it, isn't it? You're like, you're talking to people and you're not talking to me. I will squeak things now. So, you know, I think there's actually kind of a false sense of security in Batman now where he's kind of, he kind of gets in the swing of things, he beats up some thugs, and then Bane just straight up whips his ass. And yes, if you haven't seen it yet, they do have the iconic scene where Bane, like, lifts his ass up and does the backbreaker. And you're, like, you're kind of waiting for that moment, you know. I think Nolan was kind of obligated to throw it. Because they're like, no, if he hadn't done that, fucking fans would have rioted. They'd be like, there's no breaking the bat scene. Fuck this shit. Because you have Bane, and why didn't you do Bane if you didn't break his back? And they do that. Okay. So then the movie, there's no Batman in that movie anymore. Until the very, very end. And so, the, again, you can see why people get thrown by this. Because now the movie essentially focuses on Catwoman 
and Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character, Officer Blake, who's in the Gotham City Police, and, and Gordon. So, you know, Gordon's kind of this guy who begs Bruce Wayne to come back, and that's that's really why he kind of gets It takes involved. a weird... It takes a weird semi-apocalyptic turn to where people have compared it kind of like the Escape from New York, where just Gotham turns into this shithole. Well, yeah, and... and, and I, I was so surprised that it was something on that big of a scale, but also that it worked in the story. I wasn't calling bullshit to a lot. Yeah, I mean, Bane... Yes, it's a, fantastical, but within this world, it works. Yeah, Bane had a much bigger plan than simply, like, terrorism or, or fighting the Batman. You know, uh, and, and in the comics, Bane's plan was pretty much kill Batman. You know, I don't think he had much bigger than that. And really, Bane's character has been completely neutered in the comics anyway, because once, you know, Batman beat him, there really was no point in Bane anymore, you know, he, he got beat. But in the comics, he actually has a very sophisticated plan, at which I think is actually surprising even Batman, because, like, um, in the comics, Bane is brilliant. He's this big fucking luchador dude, but he's fucking brilliant, because he figures out Bruce Wayne is Batman, like, right on his own. You know, and so that's why that's actually why he shows up on the the fucking lawn of Wayne Manor and just basically calls him out. You know, so Bane is actually a really brilliant guy. He sounds funny in this movie. You don't expect he, him to. He sounds like Sean Connery. No, he doesn't sound like Sean. <laughs> he doesn't sound like Sean Connery. He's got this. He's got this British accent. He sounds like Ian McKellen, to me. He's like. Frodo Baggins, your punishment must be more severe. Oh no, I was more imagining him on Celebrity Jeopardy, like, ah, oh, Trebek. The game is mine! <laughs> no, to me he sounded like Gandalf, because he was like, when the Shire is in ashes, you have my permission to... You got me doing the Sean kind of <laughs> He's like, Bilbo Baggins! When the, when the Shire is in ashes, I have no memory of this place. By the way, they showed a trailer for The Hobbit, or The Hobbit Part 1. <laughs> or part 1 of potentially 3. No, yeah, they're talking like Peter Jackson <laughs> wants to crank out three movies of this shit. And I, I actually told you I could see it being done. And it, which is surprising considering, you know, of course The Hobbit is a comparatively short novel compared to the rest of the Lord of the Rings series. So it might, I mean, it might strike you as funny here at first that you're like, three movies? Really? I think he's probably going to do it in two. But, yeah, I, I still... Because there's really, like, three main phases of that story where they run afoul of the elves, they they fight the dragon Smog, and then there's this whole thing where, you know, they've got Smog's horde, and now what do they do with it? Because you know, got, they got all this money, but they can't move it, you know? So there's there's three sections to that. I guess there, you could say it's like a... You take it one as a three-act movie, but I could see three movies. I could. Um... Anyway, so after the breaking of the bat scene, it it really is a, a tonal shift where Bane essentially unleashes his plan to to take over Gotham, which he does because he's got this plan to essentially trap the police, you know, keep them out of the game, and then he turns Gotham into basically an anarchist state where he's just like, well, the cops are gone, do as thou wilt. And if you, by the way, if you try to escape or fight me, I'll blow up the fusion reactor and wipe out the entire city, by the way. Um, so, from then on, for about an hour and a half, we are following Co Commissioner Gordon and Officer Blake as they are dealing with this crisis. And I can easily see fans almost rioting over this, where they're like, there's no Batman in this movie! And I think they're, again, I, I think, one, the trailer was a little misleading because you're thinking, like, oh, it's going to be Batman and Bane just fucking throwing down for two hours. And it's not that. It's, it's, there's a lot to it in the sense that, you know, Batman is this, they're dealing with the aftermath of Harvey Dent, which is, like, one of the first things that, that Bane exposes and essentially encourages the anarchist shift because... In a way, you might not believe that everyone in Gotham kind of turns anarchist overnight until he exposes the lie about Harvey Dent. You know, so they can't trust the cops anymore, and they can't trust Harvey Dent, which was the symbol of, you know, everything good and just in that city. Now you now you can believe that, you know, the city essentially just fucking throws their hands up and, and becomes this 
essentially half of them become Bane's army, you know. And uh, so, yeah, Commissioner Gordon and and the cop, they're basically trying to find the, the fusion reactor through a bunch of this movie, and occasionally, like, Bane doesn't kill Bruce Wayne, he, he throws him in the same pit that he was in, because, uh, you know, he was, uh, he was born in this hellhole that's, that's, it's impossible to escape, and so he's fucking badass, because he was just, he's, he's fucking prison strong, or a pen, no, he's, he's, no, he spent, like, the entirety of his life just fucking pumping iron, he's that guy, you know, he's, like, fucking 300 pounds of solid beef, so, and he's like, he's like, you know, I don't want to kill you, I want to fucking break you. So, like, he's, he basically puts a TV on and lets him watch the news as Gotham just kind of descends into chaos. Now, it's, that's where I thought Bane's motivation becomes a little foggy. Like, it, it's, it's never explained why really he cares about the Batman. You know, like... You know, Batman's in his way, sure, but why doesn't he just kill him? Like, why is he so intent on torturing the motherfucker? Like, because he's ultimately a pawn of. Yeah. Okay. Uh, power. Okay. Because you can see, because he's all pissed off that he he beat Rachel Ghoul and he essentially betrayed the League of Shadows. Okay. It still is a little weak, I thought. You know, in the comics, they basically give a good reason. You know, it's an okay reason where, like, he just he wants to straight up beat the Batman. You know, he's he he wants to take. You know, he's like Gotham is my city, and that's kind of what Bane in this movie is doing. He's like Gotham is my city, which I will nuke. I, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so it's like he wants to make this ideological point of like some kind of basis of anarchy, and then he just wants to nuke the city. So like, it it's a weird little plan he's got, and. Ultimately, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It, it does and it doesn't, you know what I mean? He's, he's kind of got this fucked up mentality where he's like, I, I want the people to suffer before, well, they, before they die, you know? There's, there's essentially two parts to it. One is that, yes, Gotham will just be destroyed yeah. as part of the League of Shadows plan. The first part... Is just an extended fuck you to Batman. Yeah, he you know he wants he wants, to, he wants to show them that the people of Gotham are just utterly unrepent unrepentable, you know, and, completely and, worthless that should be destroyed. Yeah, he you know, he's he's basically got Rachel Ghoul's agenda, but in this case, he wants to not only kill all of it's it's not just a personal thing against Batman; it's against like the entire city because he's like the best way to you know he's like I can't torture you physically because you don't care. But I can torture your soul, and so like he only, not only wants to torture Batman, but he wants to, he's like, I'm gonna give these people you know hope of escape. I'm gonna give them a hope of you know disarming this bomb, only so I can take it away from them and kill them anyway. You know, so he's he, you know he's just got this massive hate on for fucking Gotham City. So you know I, I get it. It's just a little ill-defined in that. You know, <laughs> it's a long way to go to go fuck with people. It's a long way to go, like <laughs> you know, why he just wants to fuck with people when he could just fucking nuke the city. He really could, because um, it's not like he, he he's, he's not even really interested in recruiting people to his cause. You know what I mean? He's he's got these dudes who are fiercely loyal to him to the point they will like suicidally waste themselves. And you're, I'm not really sure why that is. Okay, so it's like a few things in this are a little ill-defined, but there was always a few things in every movie that were that were a little vague. Like, for instance, the whole lie about Harvey Dent doesn't make any sense. None of that makes sense. Okay, like, okay, so Harvey Dent basically becomes Two-Face, and he, snot, he snaps psychologically, so he kills a bunch of cops, he kills a bunch of, uh, you know, mafia dudes, corrupt cops. He threatens... Commissioner Gordon's family, and so Batman takes him out, and they're like, "Well, we can't, we can't tell people that Harvey Dent, you know, snapped and killed all these people. It would ruin everything. It would ruin every prosecution that Harvey ever did. It would crush the soul of Gotham." And so they agree to lie and say that hey, Bat, no. you know, they agree to lie and say that Batman killed all these people. They're like, "There's no one else we can blame for this. What about the Joker?" <laughs> the you know the guy who put those fucking bombs on the the ferries crossing the the water and 
who fucking killed a bunch of cops and, like, blew up the police station and, like, fucking shot up the, the charity ball and kidnapped several people. I'm like, blame the Joker! <laughs> the Batman doesn't need to be the bad guy here. It just... just they're not they're like we need someone to pin this on if not Harvey I'm like I just busted this green haired motherfucker it, was anyone really gonna question that <laughs> especially like five bodies out of the dozens that the Joker killed so that was always like the one thing about the Harvey Dent lie that didn't make any sense but really in this case it's a minor point it's just kind of this this one more thing that Bane uses to kind of snap the soul of Gotham but yeah, there's the, the, basically the entire second act of the movie is just watching Gotham degenerate into this horrible state, and you know Bruce Wayne physically destroyed and is slowly getting psychologically destroyed because he knows he can't take Bane, he knows he's already been beaten by him, and he knows he can't protect Gotham, you know, because he's but he was he, he was physically wiped out before. And how does he stop this guy? Well, he can't. He has to escape from this prison first. You know, he wants to. He really fucking wants to, but he can't. And the third act is essentially his recovery. You know, where he... They punch his spine back into working order, which I thought was <laughs> weird, too. No, the guy's like... He's like, oh, you have a vertebrae out of place. Here, lean up. And then he's like... Pfft. Yeah, I'm sure that helped. I hope that works. He's like, I just... <laughs> I punched your vertebra back into place. Uh, you're not paralyzed anymore. I'm like, <laughs> okay. You have testicular cancer. <laughs> it's, yeah, I punch you in the nuts. It should be okay now. I have healing it, hands. It is all right now. <laughs> My hands are strong. But yeah, it works because he just. I guess. I guess he just needed really violent chiropractic. <laughs> so you know, eventually he rises up and escapes, and it's it's this big kind of triumph of the will. He finally, like, musters the will to... Well, it's his whole character arc. Like, uh, Alfred comes up to him and he, he's just like, You know what? You got this whole death wish thing going on that I just can't follow Yeah, he's anymore. like, he's like, you know, you, you hung up the cape. You don't need to do this anymore. You, you hung up the cape and supposedly that was supposed to be it, but you turn into this William Randolph Hearst. You know, you couldn't get over it. And now, now there's another threat. And... He, you just want to die, and it's like I can't, I can't go with this. Especially anymore. since Alfred does the research and is like, Bane is gonna straight up whip your ass, because you're like you're 39, you're physically washed up. This dude is a fucking beast, and so he's like, you're just going out, you're just putting the fucking cape on, so you can go out there and eventually just get wasted because you've got nothing else. And that's that's the character arc of, of the movie is it's exploring Bruce Wayne. It's it's actually a Bruce Wayne movie. It's not a Batman movie. You, and you said that, where, you know, he's he's hung up the cape, and now he's just got nothing. You know, that was all he had was to fight for Gotham, and the only way he knows how to do that is to for charities, and that hasn't worked. You know, he's running out of money, and the one thing he would, the one big project he was trying to do, the fusion reactor, is a complete bust. So, you know, he's just kind of sealed himself in his room because he's got nothing else to do, and that's the movie is him. You know, tr he gets back on the streets, but that's really not the point. You know, he is trying to essentially, ultimately sacrifice himself because he doesn't know how to live his life anymore. And I'm like, you know, that's that's pretty good. So, you know, in the third act, he does he does return, but it's really more to inspire the people of Gotham to retake their city because you know he breaks the police out of they've been sealed in a tunnel. You know, he breaks the police out. He kind of inspires Gordon and the other guys to, you know, have plans to evacuate the city as best they can. Um, you know, he basically recruits Gordon to find the bomb, which is, like, the major thing. It's like, like, he's like, we need to find the bomb and jam the signal. You're Gordon, you take it. I'm going to fight Bane. And so, like, it really is part of the point that he is he's a figure as an inspiration to Gotham and less the, the ass-kicker that he used to be. And that's, I thought that really worked for this movie. You know, and so you do get the final match with Bane, where apparently Bane's weakness is getting punched in the face a lot. Which I would have thought Batman would have figured out. But uh, 
Or I would have thought Batman cheat. What Batman would cheat? Because I'm like, you know, you could just shoot Bane in the face, <laughs> and he'd be dead. But that's not how Batman rolls, you know. And actually, they have they have to, they have, they include a scene that kind of explains that. Like, why didn't you just shoot Bane? So like, Catwoman is fucking shooting people, and he's like, no guns, no killing. And that cat was like, you fucking serious? He's like, yes. <laughs> so the old Batman, he's not in the whole guns thing. He's just not. He'll punch you in the face. When really the whole problem could have been solved, it's solved if Batman just brought a fucking sawed-off shotgun in the room. <laughs> There's no more Bane. I found your weakness. Fire. Bullets. Yeah, flamethrower. That would have killed you. And what, what's funny is he's like, no guns, no weapons. Hang on. I'm gonna get in my motorcycle that has these fucking huge rocket launchers. <laughs> and then, ah! He starts, hang on, I got missiles in my helicopter, that's awesome. <laughs> Which I always thought was the, was the big problem with the Tim Burton Batman. Tim Burton Batman would just fucking kill you. Yeah, he'd straight up murder your ass. He'd straight up fucking kill you. Like, there's that one scene in Batman Returns with this fucking clown's fighting him. He, like, shoves the stick of dynamite down the clown's a a pants and then, like, kicks him down a sewer oh. and walks away. And what's funny is the guy explodes and Batman kind of is like... <laughs> <laughs> Not even that. He sends the bat... In the first movie, he sends the Batmobile into Axis Chemicals. And, and then just blows the, the fucker up. He blows, like, two dozen people up inside of a chemical plant. Probably sends a toxic cloud all through Dop. Yeah, he, he blows up a fucking <laughs> chemical plant. I see no repercussions of blowing up a chemical plant. And then when the Joker's doing the parade, he's like, I'm just doing the Christian Bale voice. He's like, oh, Joker's doing a parade. I'm going to get in my bat plane and machine gun that motherfucker. And so he gets in the bat plane and like just fucking charges him, shooting Vulcan cannons. And, and he misses completely. I don't know how the fuck he missed. Because... And then he shoots like rockets. He's like, ah! And he misses. The he Joker. Needs to, he needs to go to Lucius. Man, I can't hit one person standing in the open. Especially, even they did this thing where like the the computer like locks in on him. It's like boop 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 boop. <laughs> and they're like, Joker's like, ah! Ha, 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 and he just misses. I'm like, he just straight up tried to machine gun. It's like he he would have put like 400 rounds in that asshole. That would have been a great end. That would have been a great. Just cut the. Cr he gets. He gets like Robocop, where he gets just littered with bullets. Yeah, yeah, that'd be the great end of the movie. Where There's he's nothing like, but just blood packets spraying all over the place, and like, then da, 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 credits. And, uh, like Jack Nicholson is like, "Come on, you gruesome son of a bitch, come to me." <laughs> and then Bruce is like, "Well, that's done." <laughs> Call that bat signal if ever you need me. Yeah, it's like, I fucking solved that one, no problem. Fucking Joker's gone. What was so hard about that? So, that, yeah, that's Batman. Well, actually, it's funny how Bane ultimately gets taken out, which is exactly, you know... <laughs> I was like, well, that was easy. What are we doing that shit before? So, you know, yeah, that's that's really the, the point of the movie is is Bruce Wayne's death wish. You know, he has no idea how to move on with his life, and eventually he finds a way. Or, you know, or not. You know, he sort of, he finds what he has to do. And, you know, part of that is passing on the mantle. Part of that is <laughs> finding a girl who can tolerate his presence. <laughs> you know, he tries, and he, that doesn't work out. And then he's... <laughs> so, uh, that, that, so th the things that I, I like... I really more appreciated the fact that there is a series that finally went somewhere yeah. with an arc. Uh, one of the things I hate and one of the reasons I don't read comic books anymore is character arcs are like this. No, and no, even no. when things change, that someone pulls out an eraser and goes, ah, it, there you go. It's, it's what I call the status quo effect, where no matter what happens, they have to fix it to where it always stays the same. So if it's one thing I love about this series is you get the beginning, you get the middle... And you get the conclusion. You get the yeah. you get the whole arc. <laughs> well, you know, they, they wrap up the story of the Batman, you know, to where it makes sense. It's not like Batman is always going to be this guy fighting supervillains. He was meant his entire purpose in the Nolan movies, anyway, was really to inspire people to you know take back their city, which he does in a literal sense in this case. But uh, I, you know, the status quo effect in in comic books. 
and to a to a big degree the the other Batman movies, you know, the Tim Burton and Schumacher, is you know he's just this goofy guy with a lot of gadgets and he's always just kind of on call fighting supervillains. That's not what this is, even though the Dark Knight was a little more like that. Um, but you know, I I, I thought that. Uh, I actually, when they first announced Anne Hathaway as Catwoman, I didn't really see it, but she was good in this movie. I, 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 I liked, I liked her character just fine. Even, uh, oh, actually, I want to talk about the status quo effect because there's a lot of examples very recently of how that was done. Um, uh, Spider Man with the whole one more day thing. Which Not is, just the comics, but the new series. Yeah, you know they've rebooted Spider Man, and essentially nothing has changed. Uh, with Spider-Man and One More Day, they've rebooted the character of Spider-Man by writing out Mary Jane Parker to to the degree that I don't know if there's ever been a more hated character in comics that's been pushed down the fans' throats as much as Carly Cooper, who essentially was Peter Parker's girlfriend to replace like Gwen Stacy and, and Mary Jane. They're like, no, 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 we got this really cool character, and she's a... She's, uh, what did I just say? Carly Cooper. You know, that... She, Carly Cooper is so fucking cool. She, like, she's... She was ran down our throats more than John Cena ever was. You know, she was that bad. People fucking hate Carly Cooper. Um, and so, yeah, they rebooted Spider-Man, which was one of those things where... You know, people loved Spider-Man. And they loved... That was one of the few characters that ever just demonstrated any growth. You know, he got older. He... His job changed. His life changed. His girlfriend's changed because he had to deal with this secret life. Uh, so you know, every then they rebooted him, and like it's it really is a slap in the face of comic readers because you know I understand why they do reboots is to attract new readers. It's very intimidating to jump in the middle of a character arc, so, but it, it it's a slap in the face of people who have been following the stories for this long, only to have everything they've grown to know and care about the characters just stopped and rebooted. You know, it really sucks. And DC is horrible about this. Just horrible. With, you know, the new 52, uh, the latest series of reboots, um, and even before that, the, you know, basically all the Crisis, you know, comics are, are full reboots. And there's basically no reason to care about the new 52. The only there's been like two comic series that were at all worth reading, and one of them was like Demon Knights, which has nothing to do with the DC universe at large. It's like this medieval type thing that follows like Etrigan and you know uh, the demon Etrigan and all these other like basically wizard characters. Um, but yeah, that's that's what you're talking about with the status quo effect. Is like there's never any change, and oh that and it, actually going back to DC. They've never changed the Batman. The one hope we had was when they did the death of Batman, or what was it called? It wasn't the death of Batman, but it was like, okay, it would no, it was Final Crisis where they kill Batman, like fucking Darkseid kills him with the with the Omega sanction or whatever the Omega rays that come out of his eyes. They fucking kill him, and then you knew it wasn't gonna stick. You knew it. You were hoping it would. It's not. It's not because we wanted to see Batman die. It's because we wanted, we wanted evolution of the character. And so there was a there was actually a very clear evolution of the character that there'd be a new Batman, and that Batman was always going to be Dick Grayson, who you know who Nightwing was. And so you know he, that was always. And so Dick Grayson takes over the bat, and we're still like, it's not going to stick. It's not. And then they start doing this thing where, like, apparently Darkseid was, like, he sent him back in time to live all his reincarnations. Like, apparently there's been a Batman in every period through history. Yeah, there was, like, a pirate Batman who wore, like, a pointy-eared pirate hat. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. So, like, you know, they have this thing where, like, Bruce Wayne relives every incarnation until he gets to the present. And they actually, like, Superman has to stop him from getting back to the present because if he does, the world explodes or something like that. Try to imagine every cell in your being exploding at the speed of light. That's bad. Yeah, that's bad. Important safety tip, though. Um, so, yeah, the, the status quo thing, and that's not what you get from the, from the Christopher Nolan Batman movies, is Bruce Wayne has a very definite 
beginning, Which, middle, and end. They are going to reboot this. Yeah, I've, well, already, yeah, yeah. I've already told, I, I, I can already guarantee you that there's going to be a new movie, I'll say in less than four years. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they'll do it. Either they'll do a reboot or they'll try to continue the story of the Batman in... in I, I highly doubt that. They I, might, they might, because Christopher Nolan won't be back for this. He said he's no. done. Although, he and everyone else in this movie pretty much said they're done. Yeah, but there's been a lot of guys who have said that. You know, uh, I'm trying to think of an example. Like, um, well, this is a bad example, maybe, but Hideo Kojima has said he's been done with the Metal Gear series like twice now. <laughs> and so he did, that he was like, Okay, Metal Gear Solid 4. I had like he always gets an idea. He's like, "Oh, I got a great idea. Metal Gear Solid 4. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Revengeance because it's not just getting one vengeance. Sometimes you have to revengeance the original vengeance if they didn't learn their lesson. Of course. You revengeance them. So, yeah. Anyway, um I guess I want to go into I I should point out the things I really liked and the things I didn't like so much. I really, you know, I really like Tom Hardy as Bane, if even the voice was a little strange. You know, the, the evil muscle-bound Gandalf thing. It's a, it takes him getting used to. I'm like... I, I had a little bit of difficulty understanding him the first time, but watching it a second time, I was able to, to pick out his I, lo I lost more. a few lines, but yeah. Um, he wasn't as hard to understand as people claimed. Even the trailer, I, I understood what he said in the trailer perfectly. I, I didn't know what people were bitching about. There's more a problem when he talks down low, when he's projecting out to an yeah, audience. He's, yes, he's like... You get the full effect, but when he's... Like, and so Gotham you see! Yeah. The Batman is dead, you know? But then he'll hunch over and talk to someone and be like... Oh, 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 oh. He says, well, Commissioner, what are you doing in my city? <laughs> Commissioner, uh-huh! <laughs> I said, well, Commissioner, what are you doing in the sewer? <laughs> what? Well, we can't allow you to leave here with the evidence that you've collected. <laughs> oh, I, I will I, kill I, him, I, and I, then I, I will kill you. <laughs> ah, fuck it. <laughs> yes, uh, we're not paying you. Anyway. <laughs> uh, um, what I didn't like, um... Uh, there wasn't much, really. Um, okay, one thing I didn't like was I really thought that... Uh, and maybe they weren't even really trying to surprise us with this, but Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character, it's clear immediately. It, even with the trailers, when you see him, you know, he's, he's this cop who really cares. He's this, he's this cop who's smarter than your average dude. He's, he's literally a, a great detective, you know. It's, you know, he's like, he's like, I've tracked where Bane is. He's here, you know, he's in the thing, and he's, he, he finds out what Bane's plan is, like with the explosive things. You know, he puts together the, 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 the construction workers thing are actually Bane's army and stuff like that. So it's really early on. They telegraph immediately, like, if there's going to be a passing of the mantle, it's well, going to be to this guy. I figured he, he was built for something bigger than who he was. I just was trying to figure out who they were going to make him up to be. If he would if you if, if if he was just going if they're gonna play him off as Nightwing or if they were gonna Oh make if they him, were gonna try to do the Boy Wonder thing. Yeah, that wouldn't you know, once, <laughs> it it could have went a few different ways. So yeah. I was just trying to figure out how he was going to ultimately end up. Yeah. Uh I, I knew pretty well he was like, oh I think and in a way, again, it almost gave away the ending. I thought where they were like, you kind of see this character, and you're like, oh, replacement Batman. <laughs> so, you know, you're either figuring the Batman is going to retire or die, and there you, you know, it's it's pretty obvious. I mean, I'm not. It's not even a spoiler at that. I I I saw the trailer. I was like, oh, replacement Batman. <laughs> you know, and that yeah, that's it. That pretty much you know, that's going to happen. Now, that was the big thing we were talking about, is whether or not they're going to reboot the Batman franchise, or they're going to keep going just without Nolan. Uh, I think they could. I think, you know, actually, I think people are going to watch uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt in this movie and be like, you know, he could do this. Like, he could, he could be the Batman. I know Hollywood, they are so dead scared of change. They're no different than comic book people. Yeah, but the Nolan Batman movies make a shit ton of money, and they like that. You know, I I see I, I I I see that, but at the same time, I know that they they prefer their safe security but that's, blanket. No, that's a safe security blanket, though. I mean, 
if you make a movie in the style of these movies, you know, that's that's printing money. They'll 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 keep the the dark tone, but I I fully see them going back to good old Bruce Wayne and and uh, Alfred beating down the Joker and and Two Face. Yeah, uh, but. You know, they really don't stop making movies like this until the profits start to die down. You know, it's it's one of those... That's actually that's actually one of the things that is good and bad about Hollywood is they will drive a franchise into the ground before they stop making them, before they stop, you know, making money. Uh, that's just what they do is because they don't want to take chances on new things. And so a reboot is kind of a new thing. Unless the original sucked ass, and these are really good, you know. So, you know, really, I think they'll just try to get the... You know, Nolan's done, but the screenwriters for this aren't, you know, probably. So, you know, I... That's it. And so, um, you know, other things I didn't like, I thought... I thought Catwoman's character was kind of rushed. In the sense that, um... Well, one of the main questions is, where the fuck did she learn how to fight? Because she fucking dismantles dudes. Street. Yeah, the streets, sure. And I, uh, although I like, I really liked her her uh, character design, which you know, uh, she's basically sewn into this leather <laughs> suit. I have no idea how hard it was. I mean, I, and I'm not saying she's fat. I'm saying like that suit. You have to be like painted on. There's no one could wear that suit. But I really liked. I liked how she had like these. Goggles, which I don't think they used as much as they should have, because they, I guess, they wanted to see her eyes. But she's got like these goggles that are, I guess, are night, like night vision, and they flip up. And when they flip up, they make little cat ears, which I thought was astoundingly cute. <laughs> uh, and instead of the the Michelle Pfeiffer claws, she's got like these insane stiletto heels that are like literally stilettos. They're like fucking knives. And so, like, she, they're like, oh, is it hard to walk on those? And she's like, no, and then starts stabbing people with them. And I'm like, that's fucking awesome. It, and I was like, I never really liked Batman Returns, even though people, ignorant people say Batman. Batman Returns is, the, is one of the worst ones. I won't say the worst, but probably second worst in my mind. I need to see Forever Again. I haven't, I, I haven't seen it since the year it came out. And I remember liking it as a kid. I have no idea how I'm going to view it as an adult. Batman Returns sucks. Because it it is goofy. It makes <laughs> no sense. That movie, no sense. I'm not getting into this nerd war. No, no, I'm not going <laughs> You want to post... You want to post comments... I will fight you on this. You want to post comments on my site defending Batman Returns? No. Watch that shit again and explain it to me. Seriously. Try. Where the fuck did the Penguin get an army of fucking clowns? Where the fuck did they come from? Where the fuck did the Penguin get an army of rocket penguins? Fuck you. This movie's stupid. <sighs> and then, like, the whole thing where, like, Max Shrek is, like, building a power plant that actually siphons Gotham's power surplus... Power. Surplus. Bruce, shame Sh on you. <laughs> Bruce, shame on you. No such thing, power surplus. Like, the movie makes no sense. Well, you dressed up like Batman. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good scene where, like, where Gordon figures out that Bruce Wayne is Batman, and he's like, Bruce Wayne? And I was like, why are you dressed why are you up, dressed up like, like Batman? Why are you dressed up like Batman? <laughs> And they should have like they should have they should like have Catwoman right Catwoman next to him because he is Bruce Wayne, <laughs> he is Batman, you dork. <laughs> oh, one other thing I didn't like, and this was a big one. Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character figures out who Bruce Wayne is like immediately. He like he's like fucking walks to the front door and he's like, "So is Batman here?" And Alfred's like, "What? What? Uh, uh, yes." <laughs> and he's like, "How'd you figure it out?" He's like, "I saw it in your eyes." I'm like, bullshit! <laughs> bullshit you did! He's like, no, no, no. He's like, my parents are dead, too. He's like, and I saw it. I saw it, like, right here. And I'm like, no, you didn't! <laughs> Fuck you! You couldn't have done something like, like he's some good detective and he figures it out somehow. I don't know, somehow, where he, like, does some, like, uh, detective stuff. They could have done that. We're like, 
where, where he's like, you can't fool everybody all the time with this recluse shit. Like, you know, because it's well known that Bruce Wayne goes on these insane trips and gets grievously injured several times. He's like, you know, he could, they could basically pull a Clark Kent with it with this, where they're like, you know, just because we, just because you wear glasses doesn't mean you're fooling me. You know, like you're this six foot four brick shit house and you wear glasses. Yeah, nice. So like, they could have had some explanation other than I looked into your soul. <laughs> Again, nitpick. I admit that. You know, it's it's one nitpick in an otherwise really great movie. But otherwise, I liked you know I liked everyone in this. Uh, you know, I like how Gordon has matured as a cop to the point where you know there, a lot of this story is about Gordon, where he's he's built this city essentially on a lie, and he can't take it anymore. Because he, you know, he says, you know, people deserve the truth. They don't deserve to be lied to. Even though years ago he was like, we gotta, you know, we gotta do this thing. But he's he's basically sick of them. He he's sick of the city praising this guy who almost shot his kid in the head. You know, he's like, I can't do this anymore. Like this guy tried to kill my family. I'm not gonna say he's a fucking saint because he was an asshole. <laughs> so, you know, I, I really I really liked how there was this th there was a character arc for basically everybody. How you know, uh, Officer Blake still sees things in very black and white, like Batman. You know, so really great. Uh, you know, I, 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 and also I, I thought that the ending battle scene where the cops face Bane's army was amazingly well done. I thought that was great, especially when Batman. I think maybe the first time you ever see Batman in daylight. If I were to watch this, I, that I think it's the first time you see him in daylight. There's I'll a scene. Think about that. <laughs> there's, and really, there's only one scene where you see him in good lighting, and that's in uh, in the original Dark Knight, where you see him in the bank vault, where you actually see him in like decent lighting. But yeah, I was actually surprised to see that Batman kind of came out in the middle of the day to fight Bane. But that's again, that's kind of the arc where like you know, Batman he's he's kind of on his his last mission here. You know, this, he knows this. And he's going to lead these people. He's going to be a leader to you know Gotham City and show these people what you know what they got to do to fight people like this. And so there's closure on so many scores here. They settle like everything. Well, okay, I'll get to that. But uh, you know, there's there's closure on the Rachel Ghoul thing, which was the thing that made him. You know, there's there's tie-ins to Bane, and there's you know they, they kind of settle that. Liam Neeson comes back, which is a really amazing cameo. I loved it. Um, there there's you know there, there's closure with Gordon and, and Harvey Dent and stuff like that. And um, that actually, now that I think of closure, there's a, there's two things that don't really get closed out: is the Joker, and now I can't remember the second one. Mainly the Joker. Oh, a Scarecrow. Because you see Scarecrow in this movie, it's mainly just, he's kind of like this really goofy role where he's like, guilty, 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 ha 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 ha, you know. <laughs> so I was like, okay, that's that's kind of a fitting thing because, you know, Crane in the in the Batman movies was always this big weasel, you know. So I'm like, okay, I get it, but it would have been something, it would have been good to see something happen to Crane, and I know they shot something. I know they cut it for time. I just know they did, you know. But it would have been good just to see, like, Batman just, like, casually punch him in the face. <laughs> or, like, or Catwoman just kind of accidentally runs over him in the in the motorcycle. Like, he's crossing the street, like, guilty, guilty, guilty. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. Some asshole. <laughs> um, it, there is kind of a glaring hole, or I, I won't say hole, but a void, uh, with the complete lack of mention of the Joker. Now, I know. You don't need to tell me why. I know why. You can't recast the character. You just can't. You can't have the character in the movie. Just can't. I don't even know what they could have done. I can't solve this one for you. But it would have been good to see some... some method of closure to the Joker. Because, again, we're dealing with this issue where Batman is done. You know, he can't do this anymore. And so, you know, and this is something that's been confronted in comics before, uh, like the, the Dark Knight Returns, that comic series, where the Joker, you know, Batman retires and the Joker completely shuts down. He becomes catatonic. 
And it's only when, you know, the mention of the Batman on the news coming back does Joker wake up. You know, he's like, I have a reason to live again. And he goes out there, and, you know, he's, his only mission is to completely destroy the Batman by making him kill. You know, kill this. so, I, I don't know. Like, maybe they could have shown something where, like, I don't know. Like, they, like, where where they cut, this guy comes out of a cell, and they're like, so, what happened to the Joker? And he's just like, I don't know, he's completely catatonic, he's not talking. Or something like that, where you, you but... This is where I was actually thinking there might be some wiggle room for sequels here. It's because they never wrapped up the Joker. And so, in a way, it doesn't matter. Like, Joker initially said he cared about who Batman is, but he really cares more about the cape, you know. So, like, you know, if Joseph Gordon-Levitt becomes Batman, well, he still has a reason to care because it's Batman, you know. He's going to try to corrupt this dude, break his spirit, much in the same way Bane did. Anyway... So, uh, closing thoughts on this movie. Like, do you, do you think people are gonna? Do you think the mixed reaction is justified? Like, if if you if somebody said I hated this fucking movie, I was expecting a Batman flick, and I didn't get a Batman flick. Like, do, what do you think? Like, do you think they're off base, or do you think they're just like? Do you think they just don't get it, or? I think it's because, uh, it, like I said, it, it's. I think it's how you go into it, and that's yeah. why I'm kind of giving the warning about it. Yeah, it, honestly, I, I think the trailer did more damage to this movie than than anything else. Like, if they did, like, I actually, I probably could have cut together a better trailer, where they they go to a news report and they say like the Batman hasn't been seen in over seven years. You know, he's in hiding because he's killed Harvey Dent, and then they kind of focus the trailer on Gordon and. And Officer Blake again. The people go to being like, "Where's Batman in this movie? What the fuck?" You know. So I like think my my two most enjoyable movies this year so far are Batman and Avengers, yeah. and then there's a a wide space in between anything else. But they're two completely different movies. Avengers yeah. is pure enjoyment, action, fan service, mm. just fun, and this is. You know, it's a conclusion. A, it's a character character it, it, study. It's 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 completely different. From it's a much more cerebral movie, and that's that's weird to say considering it's a movie about Batman. You know, um, but it really is a, a movie that deals with you know all these characters who have kind of been on this wild ride, and it's ending now. You know, so you've got Alfred, you've got Bruce Wayne, and you've got Gordon, who. Is kind of nearing the he's he's he is nearing the end of his career because they even say the mayor's going to fire him, you know. So, uh, and then you've got Blake who he's he quickly grows disillusioned with I won't say corruption, but the politics of the police force and how things are run in Gotham because you know he's seeing his boss fired, he sees that you know Gordon has essentially you know, the guy he trusted most. He sees that Gordon has lied to the city about, like, the biggest thing ever, you know, so he's become co completely disillusioned, so you can see why he becomes a vigilante, you know. Oh, by the way, who wrote the note? Like, he sees a note with the coordinates. Was it, like, Bruce Wayne that did that? I don't know where that note came from. You know, when he, see, when he swings into the waterfall? Oh. And he's got the, the coordinates there? I think... Bruce just left it to him. You did, well, there, yeah, there, there must have been something cut there because you can almost sense the, the missing cut. Because he's got this note that leads him straight to the Batcave. And I'm like, uh? Because <laughs> I was just thinking, like, I kept thinking there'd be a scene where Blake was like, I don't know where the Batman is, but like he knows where he knows where Bruce Wayne left. So like, I, I always thought he'd kind of like tear the house apart trying to find the Batcave. I think he left it as part of his will that he left something oh, to... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To... Uh, Drake or Blake. <laughs> okay, that makes it. I kept thinking there was going to be a scene where, like, I, I like, you know, Batman's in the cell. I thought he was paralyzed. Like there was, like, it was not possible for Bruce to get up, and <laughs> until you punched him in the spine, I honestly thought you were actually going to see a, a scene where Blake suits up and then like fights. I don't know how it would have worked him fighting Bane on his own. <laughs> I don't know, but I was like, I, I was really expecting that scene. Um, no, it's, it's but I, I can kind of see this not being everyone's cup of tea because yeah. they're expecting an action movie. But but I I loved it, and, yeah. and I I think 
given that people come into it with the right expectations, that they're going to like it too. Now, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say it was better than the Avengers, better or worse, because they are completely different flicks. Completely different. <laughs> and I, I always... And I enjoy them in different ways. Now, before you before you say, yeah, but which one's better, I all, when somebody says, well, like, what's the best movie you ever see? I get this every Q&A. What's the best movie you ever saw? What's the worst movie you ever saw? I always flake on that question, because it's not as simple as that. You know, it's, it never is. Because you've got to classify movies like that. You know, you've got to say, like, what's, you know, what's your favorite sad movie or what's your favorite comedy? Because it's not, it's just not a simple question as that. Because, like, bad movies. I could say movies are bad for really different reasons. You know, ineptitude, boredom. And even though these are two superhero movies, they're, they're completely different. Yeah, it, you know, other reasons they can be bad, they're just plain offensive yeah, so like, so like the room, you could take the room as being like, oh, that's the worst movie I ever saw. That movie's funny though. It's just, it it basically is acting ineptitude, in that you know in in that or boredom, after last season, in terms of sheer boredom, offensiveness. I could come up with a few. One being the life of David Gale. <laughs> that movie sucks. That is a fuck you movie where the movie ends and you're like fuck you, just just horrible. I'd so, say seven pounds too in terms of, of moral. <laughs> God, that made me like throw up a little. That, <laughs> Excellent. I was like, oh, seven pounds. <laughs> uh, you know, in terms of just complete directorial witlessness. Uh, which one didn't I like more? Transformers two or three? Two. two. I hated two way more. So like, just you know, directorial incompetence. I'm like, oh fucking, bark at the moon. <laughs> oh god. You know, in terms of, you know, you know, Breaking Dawn has its own score. That is, on, in terms of boredom, and hateful characters, that's really high on the list. You know, if if you put a gun to my head and it was like best movie I ever saw. My answer would be really disappointing to you, because mine would be Big Trouble in Little China. You know, just, you're like, what? Hey, it's just my favorite movie, you know? You know, I just, you know, my answer's never going to be as satisfactory, you know? Like, I'm never going to say, like, Citizen Kane, great movie, just not my favorite. <laughs> so... Yeah, I, I, I honestly think the best piece of advice I could give anyone and that you could give anyone, because I am honestly very grateful you gave me that warning, because had you not, I might have been really thrown and maybe upset about what I got. You know, I, I'd have been so thrown I wouldn't have been able to appreciate what was going on in the movie. you got to understand this is not a Batman movie. It's a Bruce Wayne movie. And that's really the key. You know, Batman's in it, but it's really about Bruce Wayne dealing with, you know, the end of his career and the end of his life as a crime fighter. And there you go. So, uh, last words on that one? No. Okay. Wrap it up. <laughs> so, that's The Dark Knight Rises. I hope you enjoy it, because I really did. You just got to be warned that it's a, it's a different movie than what you're expecting. So, until then, signing out. See you next time in Canada, because that's where I'm going. It's going to be a long flight. <laughs>